Let's round off the session with a book review. This lovely big chunky book is Edward Said's Orientalism, which I have been going through for various reasons recently. Um, some people may be familiar with Edward Said watching, some may not. Uh, my colleague Bob indicated he was getting rather tired of what passes for debate on another channel. I'm really not surprised, Bob. Your, your mind is shall we say, several leagues above some of the nonsense that's going on in there. Um, <laughs> debate does not consist of typing we was kangs or, or like they have invented nothing but sticks or silliness like this. Smog, Kate, strangely enough, came out with remarks about Kierkegaard, which were, were actually quite interesting. He'd be well welcome to have a debate on that. In any case, if you're not familiar with Saeed... We'll do a small presentation on him by sharing a screen. Again, with this lovely pr product from Zoom. Yes, you can tell I'm getting really sick and tired of it. I'm going to have to find something a bit more up to date or um, uh, uh, <laughs> sort of convenient. I think that may be sorted out for particular other reasons in the next week or two. Orientalism is a 1978 book by Edward Said in which the author establishes the term Orientalism as a critical concept to describe the West's commonly contemptuous depiction and portrayal of the East. As you can see, it's quite an oldish book. It's going on for, it's nearly as old as me. Um, at, at the same time, the dinosaurs rule the earth. This book and I were young together. Um, <laughs> societies and peoples of the Orient are those who inhabit the places of ancient North Africa and the Middle East. I might take issue with say bugging everyone in together like that because some of those societies differ quite a lot. But I do I do take his main point that they're exoticized. Said argues that Orientalism, in the sense of the Western scholarship about the Eastern world, is inextricably tied to the imperialist societies who produced it, which makes much Orientalist work inherently political and servile to power. According to Said in the Middle East, the social economical and cultural practices of the ruling Arab elites indicate there are intrigual satraps who have internalized a romanticized version of Arab culture created by French, British, and later American Orientalists. Examples in the US book include a critical analysis of the colonial literature of Joseph Conrad, verification, it, it is in there, but I'm not going to go and edit Wikipedia. Someone else can do that, which conflates a people, a time, and a place into one narrative of an incident an adventure in a, an exotic land. Through the critical application of post-structuralism in its scholarship, Orientalism influenced the development of literary theory, cultural criticism, and the field of Mid Middle Eastern studies. Yes, it did. It's a very famous book, but it's not the most up-to-date work. And it has been refuted in some ways by other people who point out it has a limitation as a model. In any case, it's still a, a valuable view as it served as a kind of a, a counter view. This is a biography of um, Edward Said. It's it's quite lengthy. I'm not going to re read out sort of what appears to be several thousand words on Edward Said, but he's well worth learning about. What I will do, however, is uh, hopefully this book has a proper, proper sort of... Um, Index, you never know with some of these books. The ideas of you'd be surprised with some of these academic works. The idea of actually having an index seems to be sort of a, an alien concept at times. Yeah. It really does. Let me see if I can find a good passage to read out. Ah, oh, yes, here we go. So, Alfred, this, this is a quote from um, some uh, from a sort of Victorian period figure, Cromer, talking about Sir Alfred Lyle. One said to me, accuracy is a bore unto the Oriental mind. Every Anglo Indian should always remember that maxim, want of accuracy, which easily degenerates into untruthfulness, is in fact the main characteristic of the Oriental mind. The European is a close reasoner. Oh, they have found plenty of Europeans who couldn't reason their way out of a paper bag. His statements of fact are devoid of any ambiguity. He's a natural logician. Really? <laughs> Albeit he may not have studied logic. 
Uh, seems to be a sort of bias going on in there already. He's by nature sceptical and requires proof before he can accept the truth of any proposition. Am I allowed to start laughing at these claims at any point? His trained intelligence works like a piece of mechanism. The mind of the Oriental, on the other hand, like his picture a street, is eminently wanting in symmetry. He's reasoning into the most slipshod description. Although the ancient Arabs required in a somewhat higher degree the science of a dialectics, their descendants are singularly deficient in the logical faculty. They are often incapable of drawing the most obvious conclusions from any simple premises of which they may admit the truth. Endeavour to elicit a plain statement of facts from any ordinary Egyptian. His explanation will generally be lengthy and wanting in lucidity. That may have something to do with the fact that if you're being ruled by a soddingly great empire over the top of you, you may be careful what you say. He will probably contradict himself a dozen times before he has finished his story. He will often break down under the mildest process of examination. This reminds me quite a lot of some the way some English writers characterise the Irish has never been able to get to a point in a story of going around the house. Yes, for the same point as I mentioned a few minutes ago, if someone is ruling you, you may wish to reserve your points to yourself and think about what possible consequences may come of them. It's not that you can't reason. It's that you are quite capable of reasoning far enough ahead to think, oh, what, should I be saying that to these guys at all? The same logic, I'm sure, was employed by the average Russian peasant under the Russian Empire with the Ocarina or people under with various groups like that. You're bloody careful what you say to such people. Here's the opening to the book. On a visit to Beirut during the terrible civil war of 1975 to 1976, a French journalist wrote regretfully of the gut downtown area where the head one seemed to belong to, and wait for it, here's some dreadful French from me, the Orient of Chateaubriand and Nerval. He was right about the place, of course, especially so far as a European was concerned. And this next line is in some ways the key to this book. The Orient was almost a European invention. That's almost the key to this book, that basically what we think of as the Orient or Asiatics, we're almost inventing it and we're dealing with our own invention rather than a reality. It's well worth a, a read. It's not the lightest book you're ever going to pick up. It's not tea time reading or something. But if anyone wants a serious debate or a serious book, there's something worth debating. 